Today I'm going to do a five minute Tinkercad um, get up of a cup I call the Greedy Cup. It's uh, a kind of ancient uh, historical thing. I can't, uh, I think it's called the Pythagoras Cup. And essentially what it does is if you fill it up too high, um, if you're pouring yourself a drink at someone's house, it drains itself. So nobody ends up getting uh, the booze. So it's kind of a neat trick. Um, it, it's it definitely looks different, not like a normal cup. You can disguise it better in the handle, but uh, I'm just trying to do a, a quick and uh, easy, basically, um, cup that will be uh, easy to print and easy to uh, design. So I find a six centimeter cup works well, and uh, I like to make it smoother, so uh, make sure that I max out the sides to 64, and that way it looks relatively smooth when you print it. And all I do is I take this cone shape where I've made the, the cone wider at the top, or I guess uh, than at the bottom, and I copy and paste it, and I move it back over top, exactly over top, and then I raise it up about three millimeters. Now I shrink it about six millimeters. Well, what's going on with that? Four in both directions. And I bring it back to center. Three millimeters uh, I find um, is good if you have a lot of perimeters. It basically makes it solid infill um, and uh, makes it hold water quite nicely. So I've selected both shapes, I'm going to group them together, and now I have a very basic cup. So that, believe it or not, is pretty much all I do uh, in regards to the cup. Pretty straightforward and easy. Um, now where the trickier part comes is the siphon uh, that we're going to place in the middle of the cup. So I want to get my... Uh, I want to get it centered, so I want to make sure that I've got this placed in on a center line there just for ease. Again, I max out the sides to 64 on a cylinder. I place this right in the middle of the cup. Uh, when you use your left and right arrows, you can move the shape around. It moves in the snap grid uh, distance. If you hold, I think, control, no, shift arrows, it'll do one centimeter. So I'm just using my uh, cursor arrows. And what you want to do is you want to stretch this to be almost as tall as the cup, maybe four or five millimeters shorter than the top. So if this is a 60 centimeter or 60 millimeter cup, I'm going to make it 55 tall because uh, that'll be five millimeters from the top. And I'm just going to um, basically leave that there. The actually no, I'm going to drag it out. Sorry about that. All right. Now we need to make this thing hollow. So again, I'm going to use three millimeters as my uh, kind of magic thickness here. So this is a 20 millimeter, um, not diameter, diameter, yeah, not radius. Radius would be half that. So diameter, um, and so I'll take off three from each side. That'll make it 14. Lost it here. There we go. And again, I'm going to make it. This was, I think, 55, so I'm going to make it 3 shorter than that, and make it 52, and I'm just leaving 3 millimeter walls in height just, just to make sure that it is indeed um, waterproof. So I'm going to group it together, and now I've got a, a hollow top, and I'm going to do the same thing again. So I had a 14, uh, so if I want a gap in there, uh, I want, don't want it to be super tight. Uh, 14, I'll do... do a little bit different here. 14... I'm running out of space here. 9 by 9... that one five all 
right. So basically what we're doing is we're making the straw. So the water will have to flow up. I'll do, you know what I'll do? I'll do a cross section when we're done. We want it. We want to make sure the water can come up and down this tube we're going to make. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is to get a stealthy way for the water to get in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make just a little cross pattern, or you know, you know I'm even just going to do one. Um, not too big because I want it to fit inside the cup and I know that that bottom of that cup is three millimeters uh, thick so I'm going to raise it three millimeters off put it in there make sure it's centered uh, I like even numbers so let's do even there we go so I'm going to group that and you're going to see why I did that in a second I'm going to grab this, both of them actually, so let me select both, and I'm going to move it into the center. So that should be centered now. It is not. It's because I didn't use an even number. Let's do that. same thing. Alright, I think that'll work nicely. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all these parts and we're going to move them into the center of our cup. Right. Actually before I do that let me show you basically how the mechanism works. So I'm going to do a cutaway of this. Group. Oh, almost. Alright, so basically what happens is this will be the bottom of the cup. It'll be solid all the way through. And this will be the inside of the cup, very much like this. Um, and what will happen is the water will come in down here, and as long as you don't fill it up past this point, the water will never drain. But as soon as you fill it up past this point and it starts to come down there, the weight of the water will start a siphon action and it will suck the water out of the cup until the cup is completely empty. Now the smaller, the lower you make this channel, the more completely it will empty the cup, but it will take longer. Um, so it uh, it's kind of a trade-off. You can figure out what works for you. Just play with the circumference of uh, your circles here. Um, I feel like the inside of this might be a little thick, but uh, a little big, but we'll see what happens. So let's get rid of my cutaway. I'm going to grab all the pieces and move it into the center of my cup. And one more. There we go. So now when I merge all these together into one piece. We should notice I've got a hole in the bottom of the cup. What I'll do is I'll just do a quick cutaway to make sure that uh, everything looks good. And there we go. So we can see water goes in, it gets up to this level, and as long as it doesn't pass this level we're good. And uh, if it does, then the cup empties itself. So there are um, cups that you can buy where it actually has a little hole and it goes up through the wall and into the handle and then out the bottom. And that's way more stealthy than this because anyone who picks up this cup will be like, hey, why is there a big bump in the middle? Um, you can kind of lie and say, oh, you know, it's ice is in there. You know, it's a freezer cup and, and just see what happens to have some fun. Um, but uh, I'm going to give this to my kids to actually play with in the bath. It'll be like a fun little trick I'm going to play on them. Um, and uh, export and the neat thing is there's very little unsupported area there's no major overhangs your printer has to be able to bridge about 
um, what's that, 14 millimeters, which is usually no problem for most printers. Um, when I find I'm printing, um, when I find I'm printing very uh, waterproof things, I will print in thicker layers. And this is one that I made earlier today and it printed perfectly and worked perfectly. Um, I'll print in thicker layers, uh, a little bit hotter than normal, so like 215 or 210. I had to tweak this one on the printer itself while I was printing it. Um, and uh, a little bit slower on the printers and uh, yeah, all, quite a bit hotter. And I also increased the number of perimeters. So if you can see, it's the whole the whole thing is perimeters. There's no real info except on the very bottom. Um, it holds water fine. Um, no, it's not food safe, um, but uh, it's a fun little toy. And you can even teach physics to your little one and play a little joke on them. Or your friends. Uh, it's a big shot glass, but it's about the size of like a Dixie cup, a re uh, disposable Dixie cup. So it works perfectly. And that's a six centimeter cone. So uh, it takes about two and a half, two hours and 40 minutes to print at a conservative speed. Um, yeah, so if you, hopefully you guys like this. If you want to see more, let me know in the comments. If there's something you want to see improved, let me know. Uh, this is my first time kind of doing a one take uh, mini tutorial on both Tinkercad and 3D printing. So uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe if, you, uh, if I earned it. Thanks, have a good one.